<laughs> so that is above our audible frequency. Don't forget, ultrasound is a longitudinal wave. It's a pressure wave in air. So it needs a medium to travel on. There are corresponding regions of high pressure and low pressure. Regions where all the particles are bunched up closely or where they're spread out quite far apart. We call those regions compressions and rarefactions. Compressions where they're squashed together or compressed or high pressure. Rarefactions where they're stretched apart or rarefied, we'd say. What? So compressions are regions of high pressure, yeah? Where all the particles are close together. Low pressure, so rarefaction, right? Longitudinal waves still have a wavelength, and you'll have to define that as the distance between two compressions or two rarefactions. Also, they'd have an amplitude, and you think about that as how far each particle is moving. Remember, if you're asked to define a longitudinal wave to say that the vibration is parallel to the direction of energy transfer, don't use words like side to side, but to use the word parallel. The vibration is parallel to the direction of energy transfer. Represent the sound wave as a transverse wave, and that's sometimes where kids get confused about this. If they're given an oscilloscope trace and say, well, that's a sound wave, and it doesn't look like a longitudinal wave. But you can see the peaks in the oscilloscope trace there, the transverse wave, correspond to the high pressure regions and the troughs, the low pressure regions. So you've still got the idea that one wavelength is the distance between two peaks or two troughs. It's just we can actually use the transverse wave or the oscilloscope trace, the representation, to make our measurements and make our calculations. And that is above 20,000 hertz. See if you can guess this time. Beep, 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 beep. One use of ultrasound is for a position sensor. So here on the back of our car is a ultrasound emitter and receiver. It emits an ultrasound wave which is then reflected back to the receiver from the wall. It's an ultrasound emitter and receiver. That's a hard thing to get your head around. The, this thing gives out the ultrasound waves and receives them back. And all the computer does is work out, based on the time it takes, works out how far away that thing is. Does that make sense to you, camera? Yeah. Thank you, camera. Because sound waves have a certain speed in air, the computer inside the car can very quickly work out the distance to that wall. Parking sensor is very good, yeah. So if you look at the back of most cars, you'll see little ultrasound sensors, okay, which do which measure the distance that, over which the wave has travelled and reflected back. The speed of sound in air is about 330 meters per second. Let's say it took 0.006 seconds for that pulse to be emitted and then received back by the car. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the box, put it close to it, and you'll see the line is really quite low down, it's only about 10 centimetres away. If I move it further away, you'll see the line increase distance away. Okay, so at the minute the box is only about 10 centimetres away, you can see that. It's about the 10 centimetre line. If I move it gradually further away, the ultrasound sensor is just checking the position of the box. Well, we know the speed and we know the time, so we know the distance, S, is the speed times the time, V times T. So that's 330 times 0 0.006 seconds, and that gives us 1.98 metres. But you have to remember, that was the time for it to get there and back. So the actual distance to the wall is half that. The distance to the wall is 1.98 divided by 2 and 0.99 metres. So it's basically one metre away. So in the car you'll hear the bleeping telling you you've got about one metre to go before you're going to crash your car. Well, I just wanted to define for you there what ultrasound is. Yeah? Ultrasound is higher than the frequency of sound. You might want to make a quick note of that. The region we can hear is 20 to 20,000 hertz, just HZ for hertz, and the re above that, above 20,000, we're in the region of ultrasound. You do need to remember, you know, when, when it says ultrasound, it's referring to the wave, and when it says ultrasound scan, it's referring to the actual scan. It's detecting the boundaries between the different tissues inside the body. 
it's going to reflect off the boundaries between, let's say, the stomach fat and the outside of the uterus, and then the boundary between the amnion and the uterus, yeah, or the different, even the different parts of the uterus itself. And they can make really accurate, even 3D images these days of the, the fetus inside the body. It is used for medical scanning. But you have to always remember that the distance the wave travels is twice the distance to the thing. So you've either got to divide the time by two or divide the final distance you get by two. It's pretty easy stuff, but just don't forget that one thing, that the distance is always going to be there and back. There are loads of advantages to ultrasound scanners for medical uses above, let's say, x-rays. Some of the advantages that ultrasound scanners are, they're not ionising unlike x-rays which can actually damage living cells or cause mutations. They give a live picture so we can actually see the fetus heartbeat or even we can use Doppler shift to actually see the blood flow in somebody who might have heart problems. They also can give you detailed images of soft tissues because they're reflecting off the boundaries between the different mediums, the different materials inside the body. X-rays will just pass straight through these and are much better for imaging bone. Ultrasound is used for diagnosis, but they can also be used for treatment. They can actually break down kidney stones, and you need to remember the vibrations will be passed onto the stones and the stones will break apart. Then they're much smaller pieces, and so they can be passed more comfortably through the urine. It's a medical treatment using ultrasound, rather than a medical scan. So ultrasound can be used medically for treatment and for diagnosis. Now what the Rubens tube is a really nice demonstration of is how frequency and wavelength are related. To understand how frequency and wavelength are related, they're related by the wave speed equation. The speed of the wave, which is the same in any different medium, so the speed of sound in air is different to the speed of sound in water, the speed of sound through steel, uh, but always that is the same in that medium. So the wave speed in that medium is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So basically, if you increase the frequency, you decrease the wavelength for the wave speed to be constant. If you increase the wavelength, you decrease the, the frequency. We use the short form, the algebra, V for wave speed, F for frequency, and lambda for wavelength. We use the units meters per second for speed, hertz, that's HZ for frequency, and meters for wavelength. Hertz is a bit like saying per second. It's how many vibrations per second. So meters times per second gives you meters per second. Remember I said to you, higher frequency, lower wavelength, shorter wavelength. Can you all see that? Yeah? I'll go back down, lower frequency, what twice the wavelength? Whoa, longer wavelength. Thanks for watching this video from Gorilla Physics. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, why not go ahead and subscribe. I hope you found it useful, so please tell your friends, and every like and share that we get helps us be more useful to more people.